Hello, this is Bern, and if you're losing sleep over choosing the wrong partner, on today's video, I'm gonna help you predict if your relationship can last. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com. And if you are questioning, wondering, anxious about your feasibility of moving forward for the long term with a guy, then you're in the right place. Listen, through all the years I've been helping women find love, I have never encountered someone who sh connects with me and says, hey, I want to find an amazing man for a very short relationship. Why? Because if you want to find, if you're putting in the effort, the energy, all the things to get into a relationship, you want it to last as long as possible. So I'm gonna base this video on the principle that you are like the majority of human beings who want to extend pleasure, fulfillment, joy, intimacy for as long as possible. And if that's the case, and what you've experienced is the opposite of that, maybe you, there's a guy that you connect with and you don't even find him, he finds you. <laughs> and as he finds you, he starts reaching out, making time, showing up, being gentlemanly with you. And in the process of that, you start falling for him. And maybe a month into it, things seem to be going great. And maybe two months into it, things have fizzled. He's disappeared, he's pulling back, he's ghosted you. If you've experienced this more than once, and if it hurts you every time you experience this, what I want to give you right now is how to diminish the risk of this happening. And the first principle I wanna share with you is that there is no magic pill, no magic cure to where you can avoid that 100% from happening, but what you can do is you can diminish the risk. And this is, this is what this video is all about. First question you need to ask yourself in terms of evaluating whether the guy can connect with you or not and ride the wave with you for the long haul is if your life stages are compatible. So what does that mean? That means that regardless of the values and the beliefs and the certain characteristics that the man has that you find appealing or attractive, if he is in a different life stage than you and that life st stage is not compatible to where you are, then the likelihood that this can work is very small. So what are some examples of this? Imagine that you find yourself at the top of your career and he's just had a financial setback that's causing him to start from zero. Well, the likelihood that he can put the priority on the relationship when he hasn't figured out his own shit is very, very small. Now, what happens when the guy is of the kind that uh, has been single for a long time, has never been married, never had children, and you have children? Well, especially if the guy is younger than you, he might want something that you don't want. Maybe he wants children and you're not interested in children anymore. Maybe he's not sure, but you're sure you don't want them. Or maybe you're sure that you do want them. Maybe he doesn't have the capacity or the kindness or the patience to understand what it really means to put someone else first before you multiple times in your life because he's never had to do that. So those could be different life stages that might make this increasingly harder for you. Does it mean it can't work? No, it just means you have to really pay attention where you stand and where he stands right now in his life to see if there's even a, an option to invest time and energy. Number two, what do you want and what does he want, right? What's the vision? Here's why this is important. Because if what you want is marriage within, let's say, a year, a year and a half of connecting with someone, and you want specific things in your life, like buying a house together and starting a family, and he doesn't want that, then again, just like the first example I shared with you, not only is your life stage incompatible, the vision for what's optimal is incompatible, right? What is it that makes him feel the happiest? If he could get it his way, what would he have? And if you could get it your way, what do you have? And if those two match, then you're in principle going to the same destination, but if those don't match, then you're not going to the same place. And again, it's gonna be sooner or later that you recognize that there's an impasse and the impasse might make it really painful for you to part ways, especially if there's chemistry and there's some love in the relationship because what you ultimately want cannot be met through this train that you embarked on. Number three, what level of priority is an intimate relationship for you and for him? What does this mean? This means that if you're, sometimes you see that the woman is more into the guy, sometimes the guy is more into the woman, but sometimes it's not because of a human being, it's because of what they really want. 
right? If you have been craving a relationship since you were 18 years of age and you're 45 right now and you've gone through bad relationship after bad relationship and you're like ready for something deep and the guy is just waking up to the reality that he wants something but his level of urgency doesn't match yours, then you'll be putting, dropping things in your life for him and he might not correspond back the same way. And if that's the case, you'll always feel like you're the second option. You'll always feel like there's something more important in his life than you. Am I saying that you have to be the highest priority? I'm not saying that. I'm saying you have to be one of the highest priorities, not just you, but a relationship. And if that's not the case, then it's gonna be an imbalance in a way that's gonna make you feel like you're giving your all and he's not. And it's just a matter of time before that implodes. Number four, what are your hidden rules for love? And why do I say hidden? Hidden because we all have different things that our brains, our nervous systems, our emotional self has deemed necessary to experience love. For some of us, it's time spent with uh, our partner. For some of us, it has to do with eye contact. For some of us, it has to do with physical touch. For some of us, it has to do with words. And if you have a rule that says, I have to be close to this human being in a physical way, and he doesn't have that same need, then there's a conflict, right? Doesn't mean it can't be crossed. It just means that if he's not interested in that, and that's a requisite for you, that's a hidden rule that you have for experiencing love, then you either have to change your rule, which you may or may not want to do, or you may have to find someone who has the same level of willingness to step into something that makes you feel loved, appreciated, heard, seen, felt, admired, witnessed, all of that. So you need to find out what are his rules for love, his rules for appreciation, his rules for respect, and he needs to find the same thing for you. And if there are incompatible rules, like his rule for love is time by on his own constantly, and your rule for love is time in union, then that's an, again, another impasse that's gonna make this very, very difficult for you to experience fulfillment in a relationship like this. Number five, and here's where we're getting to the meat of things. Why? Because the first things I shared with you right now are foundational elements without which you're both going to different places or you want different things or you're not, you are or are not compatible with each other. The fifth one, you can have all the first ones match, but if the fifth one doesn't work, then this relationship will not last. And this is, drum roll please, how do you resolve conflict? Do you resolve conflict in a way that's passive aggressive? Do you resolve conflict in a way that's uh, win-lose or lose-win, right? Okay, let's give you an example. If your resolution for conflict is you wanna talk things through and you want to hear someone and you want to respond with your best self, then chances are if he has the same type of emotional awareness, then you stand a chance of working things through. But if when shit hits the fan, you get incredibly aggressive or he gets incredibly aggressive, then because this is something that's gonna happen repeated times, it's not when will you resolve conflict, will that ever happen? You will absolutely have to resolve conflict multiple times in your relationship, multiple times in your life with this human being. And if you're not equipped to cool yourself down, to express your needs without being passive aggressive, to share what you need and want without making him wrong for it, without take, talking down at him, without being um, someone who s steps into criticism a lot, for example, then your chances for something that even if it has a strong foundation to work out are not, it's just not gonna happen. <laughs> so here's what brings me to a big takeaway for you right now. Because the things that I'm sharing right now are things that number six, point number six is how long do you take to go? Number six is how long do you take to go all in? What does that mean? That means that if you're someone who evaluates a human being simply based on gut level feelings and don't have any type of framework to make this uh, happen, but you feel like your intuition is guiding you and your intuition is gonna tell you if he's the right guy or not, and your intuition has been wrong multiple times, then you're probably going to fail again. If you take a different approach, and the different approach is I'm gonna take longer to connect with this man and learn what he's about. Then guess what's gonna happen? The first thing we spoke about, are your life stages compatible? It will take more time for you to know if the life stage he claims to be on is the reality of where he's at right now, 
or a fake projection of the biggest kind. It's gonna take time for you to understand if the vision he claims to want, even if it's the same as yours, is true in action or is not true in action. The level of priority for dating and a relationship is something that regardless of what he, his level of testosterone and hormones claim on the first date, a few months into it, you'll see if that's true or not, right? The hidden rules for love, the way he resolves conflict, all those things are things that you will only be able to truly evaluate if you take longer to make this happen. So how do you do this? When you've been craving someone for so long, when your heart's saying, I want to go all in, I want to open my heart, I want to give my love unrestricted to someone, how do you do it in a way where it doesn't hurt you? As I said, you don't play Russian roulette. Russian roulette is saying, I feel a guy, I connect with a guy, he seems to have what I take, what, what, what I need, so I'm gonna say to myself, he has, he's the guy that I've been waiting for instead of he could be the guy that I'm waiting for. You go all in early, and then you're going to discover the painful way if it's true or not. If it's not true, and there's a high likelihood that it isn't, then your heart, your soul, your body, your hormones, everything's involved in this thing, and it's gonna be so much more painful for you to detach from it than if you take the space to get to know him and get to know more men along the way. And only when you've truly determined mutually that it's a compatible, sustainable, fulfilling, productive, respectful, and vision-oriented uh, mission, visions match type of relationship that you say, I'm going to take the next risk, which is exclusivity with this human being. Now, it doesn't mean that things will work for sure. It does mean that you have a higher likelihood of seeing something that you would have missed out if you pulled the trigger too early, which is more likely than not what you may have been doing if you're suffering right now from connections that are not lasting too long. Hope this is helpful, useful, and insightful, my dear. If it is, and you want to understand how you can cut down some pain and enter a relationship with more awareness and more uh, passion, then on the first link on the description of this video, I created a training for you that you can go to through and it's free. All you have to do is click on the first link in the description of this video, enter name and email, and you'll be immediately redirected to this class and this training that I created for you. If you like this video, click like or thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. When you subscribe, if you hit the little bell, you'll be notified of new episodes as they come out. And last but not least, if you're someone who's listening to me right now and you've been watching my videos or somebody else's videos for a while, you've been doing the law of attraction, you've been doing yoga, meditation, you've gone to therapy, uh, you've watched other uh, programs that have to do with finding the one and it's not happening for you, my best guess is that you could seriously benefit from hand-holding and guidance that's customized to your needs. And if that's the case, second link on the description of this video will allow you to connect with me, have a conversation where we can find out if I can help you get this result that you want in a fraction of the time. Thank you so much for connecting, and as always, I challenge you to live a full and conscious life.